so here we are. We have our planes all set up for making the sword. We have uh, our plane also positioned in the pivot point of the object is right at the handle of the sword. So when it gets ported to a game, it automatically will be set up for putting it on the player's hand if they're going to use it for this. If they're not, you might want, um, in certain cases, if they're just random standby swords, you could probably change the pivot point. But we're just going to assume that they're made for putting into a player's hand. So you want the pivot point to be where the player would hold it because that'll be the attach point on the character. Okay, so we have that and we're all ready to go. Next thing we need to do is come to the top viewport. T, take a look at our planes. We've also set our planes back from the center point of the world, but they were built on the center point. They're just here for reference, so they don't need to be on it because the object we're gonna make is gonna be on it. And so from this view is perfect and then from this view is perfect for the box we're making or for the sword blade. So for the blade, I'm gonna to come to the top here. I'm gonna make a box. It really doesn't matter the size, thinner, probably maybe easier. Pull it up, maybe move it to the center real quick so we have it all centered out. So zero, zero, zero. So it's on the center of that. Go to front again. Now we can scale this up and we can try and drag this up and down and make the height right and all this stuff and fight with it and all that. But what I usually just do is turn it to an edible poly. So I'm going to turn it to an edible poly. I'm going to make it transparent by pulling, pushing Alt X. I'm going to turn my grid off so I don't have to fight with that uh, noise. And then I'm going to move this. I'm going to go to one for vertex mode. Grab the bottom verts, move it up to the base of the sword where the sword will be hitting the hilt of the, or the, the part of the blade where the hilt is attached. Um, and then we're going to come to the top here and we're going to pull this these two top verts. I'm just dragging a box around the top verts and pulling them down towards here. Now I'm going to come to the side verts and I'm going to zoom back in and pull into here like that. I'm going to go to the side verts and pull into here like this. Basically it's all lined up. The other thing I want to do, um, I could have done before I did the collapsing, is I could have just cut it into two places, but I figure I'll just do it this way. I'm going to grab all of these verts, or those edges. I went to edge mode, grabbed all those edges. These edges go all the way around the cube or the box. I'm going to take it and just click on connect one time. Just perfect, because I know that's the center. By default, connect connects to the uh, two edges to the center of the edge. Then I'm going to come over here and grab this one and do the same thing. This time I'm not going to grab all of them, try and get this box just around everything I need like that, because I might grab something else. I'm just going to grab one of them and then go to either ring Control R, or I mean Alt R, or I could even click on a second ring and, and it'll do the loop for me. So while I hold Shift. So what I'm going to do is just do it that way. And again, I'm just going to push Connect. So now I've got two perfectly centered cuts down the side and in the front. Perfect. Now we're going to get rid of some crap. So we're going to get rid of this, delete it. We're going to go to the left. We're going to get rid of this side and delete it. And just for getting it out of the way, we're going to get rid of this one too. So. Now we've got really just kind of a quarter position of the blade. At this point, we want to start doing some more of those connect cuts. And we're going to do those connect cuts um, either with that connect option up here that we did before when we go to edge mode. Uh, or, which again, I just pushed two to get to edge mode. Or I can just use swift loop. Because since I know I need a few of them and I don't really think they need to be perfect, it'll automatically cut all the way around anything. Even if I don't have anything selected, it doesn't even matter which mode I'm in. If I go to swift loop, it'll just cut for me. So I'm going to go back to front. Take a look at the front, and by pushing F and then click here, bam. Okay, then I'm gonna go to here, and I just wanna cut it right there because that's where I'm gonna change it. Anytime you have a vert, this vert needs to be placed where the changes are in the form of the object um, come across. So I'm definitely gonna make it go in one direction and then change directions, go here. So I definitely need a vert, uh, an edge there. I'm gonna do an edge here in the middle where it's gonna bow out. We'll make it a little bit smoother transition, but it's about, definitely, this is the center, it bends in and then bends back out, and then this one's there. So this one's an interesting one. I'm actually gonna take that one off and put it all the way up here at the tip, and it'll make sense in a little bit, but um, it's basically, we need to make an edge for this. So what we're looking at is, is something like this. So blades have different properties. Like the most normal blades, they have a blade that cuts it in half and you have the two sharp edges. This is the one we're doing right here. And some of them have the, the fuller in the middles and other things like this. this is it right here. We have a flat area and then we have the sharp end of the blade coming to the middle. So if we look at like this, it's another example of it. This is the flat, this is the hexagonal crash, cross section of it. 
and that's the way a blade is. This one is cut. It's not normally how gladiuses are made, but it was the one I found. So this is kind of a really bad Daz 3D model of it or something. Okay, so we need to give this edge a place to end because at the tip of the blade, it's also going to stop the flat part here and go sort to the that point there. So I'm going to click right there, and then I'm going to say that's enough for now. So I'm gonna, with those but with those edges uh, made, I'm going to go ahead and move this over. I'm going to move this one is the interesting one, and I guess I made two. That was a mistake. I go back to print. And if you ever want to get rid of a line, really simple way to do that is if you press two, and edge, double click on it, make sure you get the whole thing, and push control backspace. Now, if you don't push control backspace, if you just push backspace, it's what it does is it leaves all the verts that it was connected to there in place. We want control backspace. So if we push two again, push control, and then backspace, and then I go back and check my verts are gone. Just something to pick up on. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is do a vertical. Um, usually I do it before I start moving these points in because it's easier. So real quick, I'm going to go to two and grab this edge right here. Go to R for um, ring, and then I'll go ahead over here to connect and click once. Then I'll go back and start modifying the blade here. So this point right here will probably be right on top of that one. Okay, This point right here is going to be to the outer edge of this one. This point right here is going to be to this edge. This point will eventually be collapsed onto that. Oops. Collapsed onto that. Make sure you're grabbing both edges because there's two of them here. See, I screwed up right there. Okay, so back to front. And when I'm grabbing these outer edges, remember there's two in a line. So I'm going to grab two of them and move them in. And then grab two of them and move them in. And then grab these two and move them in. Okay, I'll go back to front and check. And this is where we'll start collapsing and cleaning up our mesh. But we basically have our shape close to where we want it. Um, and we're going to do some modifications to make it rounded and stuff like that. So I'll take this one and I'm going to move it over here a little bit more just so you get a better feel for what we're looking at here. And again, I'm grabbing both those edges and then moving them in. Okay, so all I have to do now is go to right click and say target weld. I'm going to target weld this to here. I'm going to target weld this to here. I'm going to target weld this to here. Target weld this to here like that. And then I'm going to come back to the front view to make sure I get everything where it needs to be. I'm going to target weld this to here. Because what's going to happen, uh, let me do one more, couple more target welds. I'm going to take these because it bends in a weird spot. I'm going to get rid of that. Say target weld this up to here and then this one up to here. So what I've done is I've made this whole channel right here that is where it's going to get sharper as it gets towards the end of the sword. So what I basically need to do is have this part gone and not make it squared off from the top. Like this, how it's square. I need it to be diagonal. So it goes from this point all the way over to that point. So it's like the one quarter of the blade. Just to show you what I mean is I'm going to put the um, symmetry modifier on it before we go any forward to further so we can see what I'm talking about as I cut, make these changes. So top or front, I'm going to go back in here, make sure I have no vertices, polys, or anything selected. So it's all blue up here, and this is nothing. And then I'm going to push symmetry. When I push symmetry at first, it's going to be disappear because I built it on the left-hand side. So we're going to say flip, just like we've talked about, and it puts it back to the right position. Okay, so now I go over to the side, and I can look at I think it's a little bit off. If it's a little bit off, you can take a click on the symmetry word and just move it over a little bit. You have to make sure that symmetry is selected. When it's selected, it's got blue outline, but not a blue fill. Okay, and then I can click off that again and say symmetry again. And this time we're gonna to go to the Y because we want it front and back. And if you remember, the front and back is Y. So I'll go to Y, then I'm gonna flip it again. And we'll take a look at it from the side. LZC, it looks pretty good. Maybe a little thick, we'll deal with that afterwards. So I basically blocked in this, this thick iron piece that's based off the, the sword. Now I just have to go back down and modify it. Now, when I go down to here, it disappears because I'm below when I added those modifiers, but I can use this little um, test tube and turn it on so it's like half full or half empty. So we're gonna go half full or full full, <laughs> half full. It's gonna be full. Um, that means we're seeing all the way through to the final product, okay? But I'm still really only working on, if I look at the verts, the ones that are in orange, the yellow ones, or the ones that are in orange right there. Okay, so I'll go back to front, 
take a look at something. And this is a little bit off when I pulled it in too close. So I might want to do one more thing, move the symmetry, this one, the one that goes sideways. And I'm going to go ahead and, oops, I still had the vert selected. Come up here and just move it, move it over. I'm going to zoom in on it and just kind of. So I cleaned it up. I'm just trying to get it right on there. Okay, back to vert modeling. So I know that I can see the final objects with the verts inside of there. I just need to move these points. So move this point over, and you'll see it moves the other side too because the symmetry is just a copy of what we do. So whatever we do to the original, it does to this piece too. Move this over here, back to front. Okay, and make sure that these are a little bit higher. Apparently they were a little low, so I'm gonna move those up. We're just taking these two edges, moving it out so they match the, the underlying image. Okay, and that's pretty good. We can probably move this up, but that's fine. That's close enough. Okay, so now we've got it all laid out. All we have to do is make it sharp. So this is the edge we need to get rid of. This is the fatness. So how do we do that? Um, there's a couple ways we could do that. I guess the easiest way would be just to collapse it, but then it would move the front and the back. So what we really want to do is use a target weld. Collapse will average the two points. This is what we want. Target weld here. Target weld this one. Again, this is the blade that needs to go from the flat part to the sharp part. Target weld here to there. Target weld here to there. And there we have a really fat blade. So let's fix the fatness real quick. We're gonna come here, grab this. And all I'm doing is grabbing here to show you, grabbing those three faces. Cause there's only six faces now if you look, or six polygons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we only need uh, three of them. And then I'll turn this back on so we can get a better feel. So the sword looks really thick now. So we're just gonna pull that face towards the center and then we'll get it a little bit, maybe still too thick. And you'll see it doing it on both sides. It's just, it's gonna show you what's selected here. Like that, I'm gonna do this so I can see the sword. You can see there's the blade, and maybe too thin. We wanna make it at least show it. I know, cause we're making a pretend sword here. Okay. And that's it. Now all we have to do is do the smoothie groups. How do we do the smoothie groups? Well, we've talked about this before, um, and there's a different video about this, but I'm going to do it in here real quick. Smoothie groups just mean that when it hits a next polygon, if they're the same, they're going to look like a rounded object. So if I turn off the edges here, and I look at this object like this, it looks like it's rounded, right? It doesn't really feel like it's a sharp edge to the blade. So what we're going to do is grab this one, and this one, and this one. Actually, we're just gonna grab this one. And you'll see that it does both sides. So really, even if I change this to a different polygroup, this one's gonna match because it's just a mirror. And the polygroup it's set to right now is four. And if I look at this polygroup that's right next to it, it's set to four too. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna grab all these center ones again, the ones we just moved into the middle, and change it to one by clicking on the letter, the number one, and then clicking on the number four to get rid of the four. And as soon as I do that, you can see that at least it's starting to do that sharp edge between the main blade and the other. Now that I have the background kind of laid out a little bit, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and isolate it, the sword too. So there's isolating the sword. Um, so I have it sharp, but it's not sharp correctly all the way around. First off, I probably want to have a nice cut on this blade where it transitions. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to change this one. And again, like I said before, it's going to change both of them. So probably what I want to do is go front and then just collapse. So how do I collapse? It's actually convert to edible poly. And now it's all one separate, all one object. There's no mirroring anymore. So all I have to do is make sure all my edges that are not connected to each other, like this one, is different. So I'm going to go back and turn this to 2. And then I'm going to come over here to this one and change it to 3. And already you can see that now we're getting those sharp edges. This is still rounded, and the reason it's rounded is because the one here is four and the one behind it is four. So I want those at least to be different. So I'm just gonna change these two, like this, to let's say five. You can leave the one in the back at four. And look at that, all of a sudden, we have nice sharp edge on our blade. Now we still have to do some more of these on the back. So I'm gonna take a look at this one. And I'm gonna take a look at this one, like that. 
Oh no, actually, I'll just do one at a time here. So I'm gonna change this from five, four to six. I'm gonna click on this one and change it from four to six, seven. So there we go. All five of our edges are different or should be. And let me make sure this is different. This is four, yep. So we're all set. We just have to do a little bit more uh, cleaning up to make it rounded and we're done. Okay, I'm gonna un end isolation, so I have these all back out. I'm gonna go to front, and I could have done this before I cut it up, but I didn't. So I'm gonna turn the edges back on so we can see them, and then I'm gonna take this edge mode, go up here to this top one, and do our old favorite connect. Now I want connect to be this way because um, if I can't, I can't use swift loop because these are some triangles in here, so we have to always use um, connect and select the ones we want. So I'm going to do one there, and there's a trick about connect. Um, if you use it, any of these tools that come up, if you say plus, it's going to set it up so you can do another connect if you want. You don't need it right now, but I thought I'd show you that. We're going to do this with chamfer. So I'll take a look at this, and I'm going to say, okay, it's not straight. I'd really rather this be straight, but watch if I go straight up and down on this, it's going to change this interior edge and everything. Really what I want to do is just move the position of this vert so they all line up and keep the position of the edges where they are. To do that, I can just turn on this thing called constraints. I'm going to constrain whatever I change to the edges so it can't move. So if I move this, they're going to stay on those edges exactly, and I can't move left or right. So I'm going to do that and then just go back to and say um, Z again, and it will be flat, and it didn't change my, my edges there. Then I need to turn it back off. Then I'm going to use my scale tool and just pull it out a little bit so it's more rounded and turns back to transparent here so I'm probably gonna go a little bit past the rounded point here because I'm gonna use a chamfer which will divide it and even out the divisions okay now that we have these all cut up all we're gonna do is gonna come back into here and we're gonna turn put on a chamfer modifier and the chamfer modifier defaults to uniform but we need to select one of these edges. So it's going to be a uniform selection. I'm going to do the middle one first. I'll click here and double click actually. So it goes all the way around. And then I'm going to change this back to default real quick like that. And this was at 0.5. And that's a real bug thing about Max. It's always been there. The second time you type something in, it, it doesn't stick like automatically. So um, if you go to another thing, sometimes it's stupid. This is how it is by default. And one of the things I don't like is how it doesn't really even out the, the way it curves around here. So if I come up to here and I change it to try, then it works much better. And watch what happens, I do one more cut there. It'll be better and then I can just change this a little bit. And now you can see that I'm getting these nice curves right here. So I'm gonna say, okay. And instead of putting checkbox saying I'm done, I'm going to say plus because it's going to give me another one to do. So I can just click on this line here, double click, it'll go all the way around it. And I probably don't want as many this time. Probably want maybe that many. Eh, one more. There. And they're even, they're about evenly separated in both sides of the sword. So I'm good. I'm going to say, okay, take a look at it, turn off that turn off the edges, deselect what I have there. And of course, one of the things it did do is it took off our smoothing groups. So I need to open up the smoothing groups again, go to poly mode, open up smoothing groups and start from scratch. So real quick, I'm just gonna grab this one, this one. Actually, I'm gonna go front and I'm gonna grab a bunch of them at once. So I'm gonna grab from here all the way up to the top. And what it did is it grabbed both sides and I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. Isolate selection. So it grabbed both sides, but I still missed a little tip up here. So here comes the tip. And that's good. And then I'm going to change them to clear all and one. Okay. And then I'm going to come to this side over here. And I have to do these by hand. It takes a second, but it's worth it. Take these. And I'm going to change this to two. That's fine. That means this one needs to be changed to something else. So I'll change this one to three. Turn it off. This one will be changed to four, which I can do both sides for here. So I can just do one time. And change this from one, turn off the one and put on the four. And then 
this one needs to be something maybe let's turn off the edges and see that may have fixed all of it because this one's different than this one yeah okay so there you go there's our sword it's laid out it's simple and easy that's the blade and i'll talk to you later